sending out some tweets. See the point. The point of this beginning scene is, is really so I can send out tweets because uh, you got to do it at the right time. Plus, no one's here at the beginning, anyways. You know, it's, it's how it goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gandhi's Thoughts. This is number 62, and of course, I am Gandhi. Today, we are going to be talking about sprint versus no sprint. This is this is a very, very, very heated debate, uh, and really, I'm going to take a look at both sides here because there there's pros and cons to them both. So, without further ado, we are going to start this off. Also, oh, by the way, before we actually we get into this, right now, if you guys want, up going on at Beyond Entertainment, there is uh, D-Scope being played by Saucy right now. You guys can take a look at it. You can throw both of us up there. You guys can take a look, see what you actually think about it. Uh, to me, it looks a little bit chaotic. Uh, there's a lot of shit going on in the bottom left of your screen, but you do get D-Scoped which is what everyone actually wants. <laughs> uh, so if that's uh, if you want to get a look as to see what's going on with that, then by all means, go for it. I'm not stopping you. It's, it's super sick. But at the same time, it's like, do I really want to see this thing in the bottom left? Like, it's literally like a chain of text, like this long on your screen, which, you know, I'm not going to be the pickiest one about it, but like, if that's what we have to deal with, that's what we have to deal with. So without further ado, First, I'm going to start off with no sprint. I'm going to talk about why we could use it, what's good about it, etc., etc. No sprint is traditional Halo. This is for all of us who have been a part of the scene for ages, since the dawn of the Xbox. Really, when you hear Xbox, you think, oh, shit, Halo 1, right? Like, Halo 1 saved the Xbox, because back then it was always, dom at least in my opinion, it was dominated by PS2 back then. Everyone wanted PS2, you wanted to play Madden on it, you wanted all your sports games, your BMX, all that bullshit, right? But Halo is what really took it over. There was no sprint from Halo 1 all the way through 3. Halo Reach was the start, the dawn, really, of introducing sprint and armor abilities and things of that nature. So, the first thing you have to look at is, is well, did is there, there definitely seems to be a correlation between adding Sprint and a decrease in viewership and teams attending it and people actually playing. So, with that said, it's like, why on earth would we want this to happen? Why would we want Sprint if it's always going to just decrease the population and i know developers are always all for you know no sprint and ideally i want nothing to do with sprint at all i don't in fact i think it's the worst thing to be introduced into halo you i would rather have thruster packs in, installed on everyone at the beginning and shields than sprint sprint breaks halo sprint makes halo awful period but so taking a look back here so for those of you who unfortunately started playing Halo competitively in Halo Reach and or just started in Halo 4, which I'm just, I, I feel bad for you. Like, honestly, I, I feel for you, bros, because you guys missed all the good times, all the great times. So without Sprint, Halo was more methodical. The thing about Sprint is that it's basically a get-out-of-jail-free card. I can go, so perfect example, nothing crazy just a perfect example okay we remade sanctuary and major league gaming for halo reach for halo Re or for halo reach right like we remade that game type okay we had the rocks we had everything we everything was perfectly set up the way with sprint in the 2011 season what we saw is is that players could push through rocks through the enemy's rocks so you go from your courtyard to rocks what happens is when you go in there you have a view of everything and then if you hold, keep holding sprint, you can get into their base. Or what happened more more than likely is, is you pushed in their courtyard and you jumped in their sniper. As soon as you got in their sniper, because everyone knows how these spawns work, these spawns are not the best, you can dictate how the players move. Now, when we took away sprint in uh, the 2012 season, it wasn't nearly as apparent because when you pushed rocks, if you didn't push at the right time, you got punished for your mistakes. So the big thing here is, is without sprint, 
you actually have to think about where you're positioned. That's when we start seeing power positions actually become more apparent. That's why when you go back and you watch like 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010 seasons, you can see obvious, obvious power positions on the map. Onslaught, your top middle is Pistola just running around like a fucking psycho, right? You got your top Beaver Creek, you know, or your, your top rockets at Beaver Creek, Ogre 1 in 2006, myself in 2006. You have your Pink 3, Ogre 1, Ogre 2, myself, Karma, legit, occasionally. Like, these spots played such an important role. And you actually got to see as players kind of shape their play style based on these positions. It's very, very important to have no sprint in Halo Reach and the reason or in Halo period and not Halo Reach god I got I don't I don't even want to think about Reach I forgot how bad that was <laughs> What a terrible terrible season 2011 was uh, but so the big thing here is really what I'm talking about is is you don't you want a game to be more intricate than it is right now right now really you could probably ask I don't know, a decent amount of the teams here, and they'd say, eh, uh, we just kind of run and gun and outshoot people. Oh, yeah, definitely, bro. Like, are you serious? Like, that fucking gets you to top 16? Well, any any strat can get you to, to top 16 here at AJO Atlanta because... I, I, you know what's funny? Just, just to take a second here. I was trying to think of it in my head, and, like, one team is going to get 13. <laughs> Just think about that. Like, it's normally like top 12 and then 13 through 16. Like, one team, like the shittiest team there, is going to get 13th. Like, I, I want to see that, like, match. Uh, I, I would love to see that match, like the battle of the 12th versus 13th seed. I mean, obviously, we're going to have plenty of downtime, so fuck it. But back to what I was talking about here. So, no sprint in Halo 4. The thing about no sprint in Halo 4 is I truly, truly believe that their the spawn system actually may work better. Now, one of the main reasons why... So, how this spawn system works in Halo 4 is, is basically you have your line of sight. So, if I'm staring at you with my... This is my circle, and I'm fucking staring right at your spawn where I want you to spawn, right? Like I'm just I'm peering through the scope, like I'm staring at you, you're most likely not going to spawn there. So line of sight has a negative influence for you to spawn there. And the reason why they added that is because, oh, we don't want people spawning and getting their fucking face ripped off. Okay, screw it, whatever. I remember getting spawn trapped in Halo 1. It was terrible. But you know what? When I was spawn trapping people, it was enjoyable. So, you know, whatever. Now, the other thing is, is, is your player, okay? You're basically, your player has a humongous radius over the map. So, let's say I'm pushing into a base. Like, my presence is going to negate spawn. So, if I'm pushing in purple side of Simplex, everyone knows Simplex. Everyone's familiar with it. If I'm pushing in on Simplex, right, and I'm going purple side, as soon as I hit that, like, little ramp, right, so I'm, like, coming bottom middle, I can hit the ramp, and then I'm here, so base is here. And then I'm staring at that. If I'm staring at it, I'm standing on it. Like they're not going to spawn purple side. It's just not going to happen. That's how it works. So when you have sprint, you know you can get from one side to the other very fast, very, very, very fast. Right? We're not going to like still. We'll still see those eight second caps on you know capture flag on dispatch, but we won't be seeing you know people sprinting back in desperation and getting the flag stops all the time like that's not going to happen no longer would we see well dispatch is rest in pieces by the way uh may may god have mercy on your soul dispatch because you got annihilated you just got annexed so fast and it sucks because we actually saw dispatch actually start evolving a lot but hey it's not my decision it's ghost so send your hate to him <laughs> pitfall takes the cake which we haven't even tested. And by the way, if I can't make the jump from from green, or if I can't make the jump from plat to green, I'm done. I'm outie. 5,000. Bye-bye. Anyways, moving forward. God, kids. Dispatch. I, I like dispatch. I didn't have a problem with it. So, so no sprint. 
what we would be seeing is people wouldn't be able to desperation stop the flag as much. We wouldn't see as, like, that's that's pretty big. The other thing we wouldn't see, or what I think we would see, is actually the spawn system worked the way it's supposed to. Right? So they, they set it up so basically, you know, when you spawn, you're not going to have anyone in your grill. Well, sometimes with Sprint, that's just how it works because you're all over the map and you can actually influence, you can have influences over their entire spawns, especially on Simplex. So they end up spawning somewhere stupid right in your line of sight. And the same with Dispatch. Dispatch, status quo going into uh, AGL 7, actually had it down to where Enable could be looking with the sniper based on positions and it was basically like Octagon for him. Now, did he ever get that off as a good team? No. But versus, you know, lesser skilled teams, he was able to just dwarf. Dwarf them. So that's no sprint. Personally, I love no sprint. If I if I had a, like a board right here, it would be like a thousand votes for sp no sprint and then like half, half of one for no sprint or for sprint. But I don't have a board. So screw you. But so look, so now let's talk about Sprint. All right, let's talk about Sprint. I know you guys are going to lash out irrationally, shoot an arrow into my knee, do whatever it is. Do whatever you want to me. I understand. I get it. I, I'm with you. I, I, I feel you. But the problem is, is when we start jumping when we start jumping into modded game types or you know we lose one of the key factors for a game to grow and a key factor for the game to grow is going to be developer support for the first time in halo's history we actually have developer support 343 is really pushing the scene we have the global championship there's a lot of money in line we have no idea <clears throat> after august if they're gonna do a 4v4 event we have another year of this game right they may do a 4v4 event they may do a 2v2 event they may do a fucking team swat event i have no idea okay they may just do another ffa we have no idea they may not do anything i'm assuming they're going to because they don't want their game to just right like no no developer just wants their game to go down and if they really want to push and make a big hoorah here for this halo 5 like they are going to need that okay they're going to need to push the competitive thing just a little bit because i am actually really excited to go to pax and the reason why i'm so excited to go to pax is, is because i want to talk to developers because when i went to e3 in 2012 like the big buzz around the convention center was his esports which is retarded name i hate the name i can't stand it it's professional gaming a anyone in here okay just just so i can rant this out i do this every time we talk about the word esport anyone in here go up to a random person and say hey man have you ever heard of esports and they're gonna say the fuck did you just say to me and then you're gonna say you know esports and he's like oh no i've never heard of that and you go oh you know like cyber athletes and then he's like i have no idea and then you go professional video games and he's like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i've probably heard of that right i mean everyone's heard of professional gaming but no we want to be a fucking electronic sport whatever I, i'm not here all i'm saying is you don't see poker calling themselves g sports for gambling sports or pool professional pool players saying oh oh yeah you know, we, uh, we're table sports. Fuck you. No, you're not. All right? You're professional pole players. You're professional poker players. You're not fucking professional gamblers. Get the fuck out of here. That's my rant. Back on topic here. So, Sprint. <sighs> sprint. Like, look. So, with that said, like, developer support is so high up like it's it's way up there bro like that is it's the most important key it is the main ingredient for success for for video games that's just how that's how a game excels right like that's really how it is for us especially as competitors and for a competitive scene like we need developer support okay we do it's it's inevitable we have to have it so, with Sprint, we get 
developer support. With Sprint, we have maps that work like a drift. Without without Sprint, a drift is gone. Like that map is fucking X'd out. It, I take a tomahawk to it, no questions asked. Period. Done. It's out of there. Like I want nothing to do with it. No Sprint. You want to know what No Sprint would do? Would look like on uh, a drift? Go grab a turtle. Throw him in the middle of the road and watch him try to get out of there. That's what he'd fucking do. That's what it would look like. It would be off dreadful. Ugh. I'm scared just thinking about it. So, with, so, look. This is really what it comes down to for me is this, right? This is the dilemma. Okay, This is everyone's dilemma. I, like all of you guys, want the most competitive game i want i want to sit back and say you know what this fucking game is so much better than your game we don't care about your viewers obviously we want to attain some of them right like we want to have viewers and we want but you know what halo's never been known for viewers you know what halo's been known for halo's been known to show up to any mlg venue and fucking sell that bitch out and buy all their shit that's what we're known for. We're not known. We're not known to sit back and, uh, like you know, have 170 teams show up and have like 90,000 concurrent viewers. No, we're not. That's not us. What we are is we're this big crazy bunch of drunk idiots like at a tailgate. Like we're like the Jimmy Buffett tailgaters who travel with him like all summer long, and we show up and we sell out venues. That's what we do. We sell it out and we buy all the shit because you know what? We fucking enjoy what we do more than anyone else. That's what Halo is. We don't we don't need the stream numbers. We don't that's not what us. That's not what we are. I've been here for forever. I know what we are. We show up. Right? But you know what? We haven't had the ability to show up because one, the events are so close together. Two, no one knows really where the scene's gonna be going. And really three not a lot of money in it uh and i know like it's not i know it's like money's not everything right like obviously you you, you gotta win but you know what like there comes a point where you know in order to be on top you have to put in the most time and if you're not making that money it's just what's what's the point so i'm with you guys i understand like we are fucking competitors like we want the most competitive game right like, we want that we want to have the chess of fps and be like huh Fuck it, you're checkers, bro. We're chess, you're checkers. <laughs> you can move diagonally. Yeah, def. We have a guy who can do that. You know what I mean? Like, we want that. It's just... At the same time, if we strive... It's like, so this is how it works. If we strive <clears throat> for the most competitive game possible, right? No sprint. Take out a couple maps. Start making forge maps. And, and add D-scope. Just throw D-scope in there. I mean, hell, why not? We're already having no sprint, so we might as well throw D-Scope in there, too, right? So, we have D-Scope, we have no sprint, we have a bunch of Forge maps. The first thing we're going to notice is we'll probably see an increase in teams because it's more enjoyable for us uh, as people playing it because that's more traditional to the roots. We would probably, we would probably go back to having 100... 100 plus teams I would say I think I think no I think the correlation here is, is that we would have more teams show up because the game's more enjoyable for them and then at the same time we'd probably have less if not the same amount of viewers excuse me than we have right now I would be I would be highly surprised if we we broke like 10k if we did the no sprint and no i don't think we'd get more viewers man and you know why i don't I, we might though like that's the, like that's the thing that kills me like is there it's this is such a world of like hypotheticals like i can't rule anything out like anything is a possibility like that's so beautiful but at the same time we lose the main factor here and that is 343 three. so we have to look at it like this okay right now as it stands i think Right now, as it stands, I think we we should not stress 
the no sprint and the disco. Like, yes, like we want that from 343. We want a game type to come from 343 for the no sprint. We don't we don't want to have to use a mod. That's like Ghost of the Army's like main argument. And I know everyone's sitting here and you're like, oh my god, Gandhi's gotten soft. And I'm like, no, motherfuckers, it's not that I'm getting soft, it's that I see it. I understand. I'm looking at it from like everyone else. Like sometimes you have to bite the fucking bullet and you have to just say, you know what? If Sprint gets us... Okay, put it this way. Put it this way. We're, we're going to take it to a vote here. If if they announced... If 343 announced a 4v4 competitive fucking global championship for $500,000 with like a top 16 payout, but you had to play, play Sprint, would you go? Would you play? Press 1 if you would play. Let's, let's see it. $500,000 for top 16. Who here wouldn't play? Oh, because Sprint means Sprint means I can look at a fucking compete if money's online. Fuck all of you. You're all a bunch of pussies. We get it. I understand. I lived this life. I know. I have to cast this fucking shit. All right. There's maybe seven twos. Congrats. So look, what I'm trying to say here is that. Okay, so now let's go on the flip side. Would you rather have that $500,000 tournament with the top 16 payout? Or would you rather go to AGL Sturgis No Sprint D-Scope? Right? Like, you know, just fucking sit on that. Like, what would you rather have? Get the fuck out out of here with this like like that is that is it like that is, i hate to say it but that's really what it comes down to we are now we have to look at it as a business investment so i think for the time being so look i will give you all this is this is my personal guarantee to everyone here Let's keep we keep fucking with the, the mods okay we keep messing with it and we get it all ironed out where it's perfect we get the perfect settings someone out there's going to be doing it anyways right so figure out if it's 125 speed 122.5 123 and a half i don't even know if you can do that but if you can fuck with it and figure it out and you know what i think the ideal time is like november 16th all right I'm, I'm gonna bring it up i'll tell you ex I'll give you even the, the the day of the week november 16th is going to be a saturday okay <laughs> november 16th is when we make a decision all right because that's going to give us three months three months after the global championships okay if there is nothing announced for a competitive 4v4 we have no need or if there's not another like ffa we have no need to worry about 343 anymore because They've already checked out, right? Like, it's really us trying to figure out. It's basically giving us a buffer. And then for the last, you know, seven months or however long until that game comes out, then awesome. Like, that's what we play. We play D-Scope, and we play No Sprint, and we play on Forge Maps. You fucking, I don't care what the hell goes on. Cut out a drift, awesome. Get it out of there. Team Throwdown playlist, set it on fire. I don't care really i have no fucking care november 16th all out to go everything goes out the window that's what i think because there's no way like looking at it like three months after like global championships right well it's actually going to be like two and a half months maybe two and three quarters i think it's august 31st yeah well it's actually september 1st so yeah it's like two and a half months they will probably have figured out by then I have to think what's gonna happen, right? And the wor and like it's already too late. And by the way, for everyone out there who's like, oh, let's have a Halo Three event. Let let's bring back Halo Three. Let let someone start up Halo Two. That ship sailed, man. Like the viewers are still there for Halo Three. Like, would a Halo Three event work? Probably, yeah. I don't doubt that for a second. Uh, but every time there's like top streamers and people are playing Halo Three, like normally Halo Three is up there. And that's because everyone knows it as one of the most competitive Halo titles out there. Imagine fucking that. No sprint. <laughs> so, 
I don't know. Like, like when we talk about that, it's I don't I don't want to say anything, but like looking back on things, I think we definitely definitely should have probably <laughs> stuck with Halo Three and just like ran over Halo Reach. I, I think that's like, and the only reason I said that is just because like when I go back, like when we everyone saw Super Smash Bros. Melee had such great success at Evo. Super Smash Bros. Melee is like 2005, 2006. It may even be older than that. I have no fucking idea. It, it was on the GameCube. Like, that is old. So if someone in here in the chat can let me know, what, what, 2004? Okay. So that was on the MLG circuit. I've played alongside with a couple of those guys there. Chillin' Dude, um, PC Chris, Mewtwo King, who's just a fucking clown. Like, I know it. Like, the game was great it was beautiful and the same thing happened with super smash brothers as it did with halo but you know what the thing was is we were so reliant on mlg that we didn't actually have a mind of our own we couldn't make the fucking stand to say fuck you like we want halo 3 so what happened with super smash brothers melee was is brawl came out and the game was basically halo reach if not halo 4 and they said eh, eh rest in pieces moving forward imagine and then it was hey, it was Brawl. Done. Right? And so they stuck with Brawl. And they built Brawl all the way up to go to Evo where they had 130,000 concurrent viewers over a couple times. Period. Would Halo 3 have that same success? I have no idea. I have no fucking clue. But I'll tell you what. There'd be more... T like, if you were to go back to 2011 and you had a Halo 3 for another season... You wouldn't have seen 72 teams at the 2011 Providence event. You would not. You would have seen a sold-out venue. You would have saw a sold-out everything. So what I'm saying here is that I think it's not too late for the ship. But, like, at the same time, like, you, you gotta start fucking jumping off of it, right? Like, it, it, like it's sinking, and we don't want to be fucking Leonardo and that red-headed bitch, like, sitting on a fucking raft when they both were, like, a wood... I think it was a door frame, right? Yeah, it was a door. Like, they both could have fit on it, but fucking Leo just decides to die because he's heroic. Like, fuck you, Leo. Like, knock the girl off. It's all about survival at the end of the day. That's what matters. But so, like, I don't think we can go back to Halo 3. I don't know. You guys could prove me wrong. If someone wants to fucking throw money into it, awesome. Sweet. We'll do it. I'm with it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it, it's... It's, it's tough when we think about questions like these because the big thing here is, is that we don't know what would happen. And so when we think about Halo 4, like, we don't know what will happen. Like, obviously, the Team Throwdown playlist didn't do much for the competitive scene. It didn't. All it did was it made it so that pro players, well, not pro players, the people who go to tournaments have an easy time and they don't have to fucking deal with uh, <clears throat> uh, customs. That's all it did. That went down the wrong pipe. <coughs> oh, that's awful. Oh, I think I'm gonna die. Alright, so, that's really all it did. It didn't bring anyone new. Has anyone in here, okay, just with, with a show of ones here, has any, it, press one if anyone in here has met, like, a newcomer into the competitive scene. Has anyone has anyone met anyone like that? You have. If you if you have like, how many people? Like after all the ones. Like that's uh, that's really what I'm asking here. Like every Halo. Like every Halo that I that has been around. Like there's been more and more faces. Like that's one of the one of the best stories that we have always painted in the history. Uh, of competitive Halo is is when a new game comes out, there's that chance where we get to see this young, beautiful talent that used to be a fucking seedling, and now it is sprouted and it is this fucking oak tree, right? Like we used to always paint that picture because new talent comes up because old talent starts dying out. They're not able to, you know, keep up with the young guns or they don't have the drive. Ninjas, the snipe downs, you know what I mean? Like that's. Like, that's there. Legit. Amazing part. Amazing one. 2006 came out. No one even had any idea who the fucking guy was. Bam, he fucking skyrockets. He's amazing. You know, like, 
but we don't have any other stories in Halo Four. We don't we don't have that story really. Like Ninja Ninja made his debut in Reach, right? Like he played Halo Three, but he wasn't known for it. He played in Halo Reach. That's where he became the streamer and basically the face of competitive Halo. And then Halo Four, we don't we don't have anyone. Like, is that not depressing for you guys? Like, it's weird shit. I, I don't know. When I, when I think about it, it's like... There is obviously something where... That, that just went wrong. Right? That's it. We have Kratos. <laughs> yeah, death. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. I will kill you. Whoever said that. Oh, shock strike! I, I will stab you straight and right in the lung. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Kratos joke. Oh my God! How bad can someone be? Whew. But that's what I'm saying here. So really, like when we're looking at it, like we can't go back to Halo Three. I mean, like I said, like if you guys want to experiment with it, I'll be there. Period. Okay. We get it. We get it. Uncle Sud's new. All right. Relax. Pump the brakes. <laughs> but, like, that's like that's what we got. All right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. So, when I'm looking at it here, if I have to sit back and weigh it, if you guys, if, like, gun to my head, what do I pick? Like, f for the future of competitive Halo. Gun to my head... Like, fucking, I'm crying, and, and I'm hyperventilating, and, and it's like fucking Go Sayami holding him with his backwards hat, and all of a sudden he turns into the penguin from Batman. I pick Sprint. And the reason why I pick Sprint is because I believe that as long as there is developer support, the community is only going to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what I believe. And the reason why I believe that is is because money is the motive at the end of the day. And whenever you have the developer running the tournament, things actually kick up a notch. You see the production get a little bit better. You see, like, in-game embeddings, awesome. Like, they use their 230,000 followers ridiculously, like, in between every game. Like, imagine. Imagine. Like, not even, like, imagine, but imagine. Like, there's a difference. Not imagine. Imagine? With a question mark, just imagine. Imagine the Halo Waypoint Twitter after every fucking game like best of five series after every game just tweeting like or after like two games like oh it's all tied up two to two we're going into game five in this winner's bracket round number three like every fucking time they have 220,000 let's say 10 percent see it that's like the normal right 10 percent that's a lot of people who are gonna fucking see that tweet and then they'll say oh dude three four three is holding this event oh shit i'll check it out bro I never even knew. I never even knew Competitive Halo existed until they tweeted it, right? And you're like, fuck you, right? But that's moving forward. So you bring those kind of kids in, and this is good. So that's where I stand with the sprint. I say November November 16th, you guys can say whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I'm with you 100%. But until then, I think we give them time to announce to see what is going on. And I'm sorry, it's not what anyone, everyone wants to hear. I know it. I take the unpopular opinion, but that's it. That's it. Um, other than that, uh, so I think it, it, it is, is Sauce Man in here. Let me let me see if the Sauce Man's in here. Okay, well, um, I don't know if the Saucy's in here, but so uh, I okay, Saucy, uh, can are we doing a show tomorrow? Is what I need to know. Are we doing a Go Beyond live show? I get it. You're here. I'm, I'm with you now. I'm seeing you face to face. Oh, my God, Kona. The man, the fucking myth, the legend. What a god he is. All right, so tomorrow I will be doing a show with uh, Go Beyond Entertainment. We'll be talking about the uh, D-Scope mod that Saucy's played. I'll probably try to get my hands on it tomorrow before the show. And everything like that. Other than that, I love you, but I don't love you. Take it easy.